Hey guys, this is Tim from Tim's Electronics Lab and welcome back to a new video. Now in this video, we're going to be unboxing this long-awaited item, well at least personally for me. I always wanted one of these and I really never got to the point of buying one. Well, that's not entirely true. I bought one but then I realized that it was the wrong one. It wasn't the one I had hoped for. Or actually didn't have a lot of capabilities and we actually got a surprise combined mail bag so let's just unbox this I'm not entirely sure what this is so let's unbox it and we'll see oh wow that's quick there you go This is a UV LED strip, so let's actually just try it. Yeah, it's a bit broken, so you might hear the fan rattle against something. Not sure how many amps she needs. There you go, so that's... It's not really that bright. I was expecting it to be a lot brighter, actually. It's drawing around 600 milliamps, which is not a lot considering how many uh, LEDs are on this strip. They are waterproof and yeah, I already know what I'm going to use these for, but I'm not going to tell you. You'll just have to find out. Take a while before you actually find out. So please bear with me. So now onto the item that I would actually thought I would get in this package. As I said, I bought one, but it didn't meet my uh, expectations, so I bought another one, and it's a UNI-T, UT210E, and the E does not stand for electronic, the E stands for the fact that if you can read this, then you're a wizard. Now this, the E stands for a fact that you can measure AC current, whoops, you can measure AC current and you can measure DC current with the current clamp. The C stands for, I'm not sure actually, either the C or the D stands for AC and either the C or the D stands for DC. But this one can do it both. So let's actually open this package up. So you get uh, leads, obviously, multimeter leads. And you get the current clamp itself. I think that this is the calibration certificate. So it was produced on the 9th of January 2023. And oops, it's a little bit cold, so my fingers are a little bit sturdy actually. So this is the quick start guide, I guess. All in Chinese. And it needs two triple A's which I think I have so yeah it's just... let's get this out of the packaging it has a silicon housing the knob also has a silicone housing. This feels rather good. Really, really ergonomic actually. This allows you to press this, to, to open the lever and to rotate the knob. Quite nice. There's a protective plastic on the screen obviously. And there are your multimeter inputs. Now, as I said, it's actually, uh, it's really tiny actually. So. Let's get some batteries and power her up. Now I got a few of these Analoop that I recharged, but I'm not sure if they're actually uh, official genuine Analoops, because they seem to drop in voltage rather quick once the charger has disconnected itself. It actually works. Nice. Let's get to it. Let's remove these plugs. Now these are not genuine silicone cables, these are cheap as silicone cables. This is genuine silicone. My trusty old EV block Ryman meter has got silicone leads. As you're able to see, these 
flex a lot easier than these. As I said, we're going to do a comparison between the two. So let's put them both on ohm and we'll measure the with my Bremen first. This is supposed to be a 270 ohm resistor. And we're measuring 266.3, maybe 2, 266.3. So let's measure it with my Unity outer range. 267 so can we do a manual range I don't think we can do a manual range so it's off by quite a bit actually oh there you go it comes closer now but it doesn't show the precision digit which is a little bit unfortunate so let's get to the next one now this is a 12 ohm resistor and another 12 ohm resistor soldered to it so it should read 6 ohms there you go so 5.8 let's see what the unity has to offer us it's rather slow 6 ohms no, 5.8 6 there's a little bit of fluctuation in the measurement result and as I'm loosening up the pressure on these leads the measurement also changes quite a bit so let's actually switch to my Bryman probes for this see if that makes any difference 5.8, 5.9 Yeah, bang on. So these probes absolutely suck. So let's get this one. This is a 0.33 ohm resistor. That's a tolerance of 10%. Let's see what the Bryman makes of this. Point three, which is to be expected. Let's see what the unity makes of this. Point three, so they are equal. All right, cool. Uh, we are going to do a voltage test as well. I'm going to route them from my lab bench to the other multimeter. Otherwise, you'll get twice the distance in wiring, which could result in a uh, different reading. So let's switch it to volt. Now let's set this to DC. It has got the upper range. So, yeah, there's some residual left in the power supply as I just turned it off. So, so they're pretty similar actually. Let's turn it on. Now I think that the drift you're seeing is just power supply noise. Maybe we should put a load on it. Let's connect a resistor. Let's connect the resistor with a value of 270 ohms. It's drawing 0 0.04 amps, so 40 milliamps. So they're both pretty accurate actually. They both seem to fluctuate along with the fluctuations that are happening in the output of the voltage. So what we're going to do now is we're going to measure current. And uh, so let me just rearrange this. And now we should measure, well, accidentally with the collect part, polarity. All right, now let's set this to two amps AC DC. It's already measuring 400 milliamps. Well, that's not good. Let's zero her out. There you go. Let's connect her up again. 
Yeah, there you go. Wow, that's... Oh, that was pretty accurate for a second. Maybe the distance between the two leads is too small or something. There you go. It was accurate for a second, but now it starts to drift. Pretty bad, actually. So let's stop this. Let's zero it out. That's pretty accurate, man. So I need to zero it out with the multimeter being the, the clamp being around the wire and no current being drawn. But this is pretty impressive. This is pretty accurate. This is actually pretty impressive. So let's change the resistor for a smaller one with less resistance, so more amps. And this is fused to 600 milliamps and I don't think that this will... Yeah, exactly. So this is uh, quite a bit. Yeah, I, oh, it starts to smell immediately. I know you can do calculations on how much current is going to flow, but I'm just too lazy. It's Sunday, man, come on. So let's connect this, six ohms. Let's short circuit it first. Yeah, we need to connect it to the other terminal. So amps. So let's switch. Oh, it switches automatically. Oh, I haven't noticed that before. So again, connect it, zero it out, and then let's power her up. Now it's drawing... Oh, you can just not see that. It's drawing around 1.86 amps, and the unity is off by a little. Not that much. So let's zero her out again. Yeah, it's pretty close. It's pretty close for a non-contact measurement system. So let's change. Ooh, it's nice and toasty. That's good because it's rather cold uh, in my room right now. So let's connect this one and let's crank the amperages down a little. I can smell the toastiness of that resistor. It's really decent actually. It's really decent. Well, it's pretty close. I'm I'm impressed. I'm genuinely impressed by the accuracy of this clamp. Now, I'm I was always wondering how much my lighting actually draws on power. So I'm going to disconnect it, then I'm going to connect the clamp and then I'm going to see how much the lighting of this studio actually draws. My lighting studio draws 8.3, 8.5 amps, 8.5 amps, so I forgot to zero it out, let's zero it. So 8 amps it is, quite a bit, but it's at 12 volts, it's at 24 volts. So it's quite a bit of power actually, uh, my uh, studio light, which is to be expected, because it's a Rather big cop LED with a power of 200 watts. This can measure up to 10 amps, so let's take this out of the equation then. And let's see if we can measure the peak current of this resistor for a brief second. Let's set it to 100 amp mode. DC, let's zero it out. And let's see how quickly she responds. Nice. I think that that was the resistor. Yeah, resistor is gone. Nice. Well, let's actually perform another test. Let's actually measure the current of this thing. And we can maybe file a report to the AliExpress seller that it's not performing how it's supposed to perform. So 12 volts, well, it's having a little bit of trouble, I think. Let's actually connect my multimeter back up. The only downside to this thing is that when you are in DC mode on another current uh, setting and you switch over to a more accurate or less accurate reading, you'll need to set it to DC mode again. I was hoping that it would remember it and it would actually do it automatically but it doesn't do that so that's a shame but let's see what the measurement is 
again pretty close yeah this is uh, about what I expect from this thing you know it's not as precise as a, a true multimeter that measures measures with a current shunt but what do you want for a non-intrusive measurement system I mean it's it's, it's it's measuring the magnetic flux of the wire and by measuring the magnetic flux of the wire it's calculating how much current goes through the wire so it's really impressive actually so let's see if we can trick this thing with a magnet or not nice and strong neodymium magnet oh yeah oh yeah yeah that's uh... oh we do have a backlight actually oh they show you where to put your wire it is, but it's greatly affected by the magnetic field of a rather big magnet. Look, it's at 342, 350. Let's get closer with the magnet. The only downside being that we need to zero it out constantly, which is to be expected because it needs to have a baseline of the magnetic field. But then again, you need to be aware of magnetic fields around this thing. If there are large magnetic fields around this thing, it won't work because the magnetic field will interfere with the actual current clamp, which is obviously working by measuring the magnetic flux of the wire. So, you'll need to take that into account. So, let's actually go to one of the other features that this thing has namely the non-contact voltage and this measures the electronic field from the top of the current clamps tip so if we move closer to the wiring nothing happens nice or oh, maybe it's measuring AC only yeah I think it's measuring AC only so let's get a plug around here I do have a plug around here. You can barely see it. I don't think you can. Yeah, it's not that accurate. I mean, I'm holding it next to the wire and the accuracy actually varies or the measurement result. Mm. They could have made this a little bit more accurate actually. But yeah, then again, you can also just uh, probe it. So I've got a bunch of diodes over here. That should be enough. And let's measure them. So 5.10 volts. Let's switch to this one, to the Unity. that accurate actually well it's not that accurate I was expecting it to be a lot more accurate it's off by 10% which is quite a bit so I would recommend measuring diodic uh, voltages with this thing so 5.63 let's check with the Bryman which I trust more obviously this is made in China well this is also made in China but I think that this has uh, undergone a much greater calibration procedure than the Unity. Yeah, that's quite a lot. It's 495 and that was 563. So, do not measure the uh, forward voltage of a diode with this thing. Do yourself a favor. I'm not going to measure the other ones because it's pretty bad. Actually, this was this is as bad I was expecting the... Uh, current ranges to be but again I'm amazed by the current ranges so let's measure the capacitance so I've got a few capacitors laying around obviously so let's pick one let's see thousands microfarad and let's do 10 microfarad maybe do a huge one of 
6800 microfarad. Let's see, let's see. All those wires, man. So, this is 10 microfarad. 10.26, okay. Let's check with the Unity. Well, that seems to be a lot more accurate than the Ford voltage of a diode. That's pretty reasonable, pretty reasonable. So, a thousand microfarad, let's measure this one. Measurement to stop fluctuating. There you go, 0.924 millifarad. So let's check with the Bryman. Always check with the Bryman. Yeah, all right, pretty close, pretty close. Not spot on, but pretty close. Now let's measure this one. Uh, 680 microfarad. And the environment says, so 6 millifarad, it's increasing but only by a bit. That's really making huge steps. So 6 millifarads, I would say. Alright, so let's discharge this. There you go. And let's measure with the Unity. Let's see if this goes a little bit quicker. Or if this works at all. Whoa. That's quick. That's really quick. And I guess that it's pretty accurate as well, because this was slowly building up to that number. And let's actually turn it off and let's grab the box, because I noticed something in the corner of my eyes. Ah, they just made a generic box for all models, which is to be expected. And they just write underneath what feature you get with different models. So I was about to say, it lists Hertz, but I can't see a Hertz option on this thing. But it's only for the uh, T210D. And I don't have the 210D. I've got the 210E. List somewhere on this? Oh yeah, over here. So yeah, it's quite a, uh, a nifty uh, device actually. It amazes me by quite a bit how accurate it is. So I think I'll put the comparison results and the final uh, results of this in a table on screen right now for you to enjoy so you can compare it and take your conclusions. I would say this is not half bad for uh, comparing it against a what was it again 200 euro meter. It's pretty decent. It's pretty decent. I was expecting it to be a lot worse. Well, except for the diode measurement, of course, that's just out of the ballpark. The backlight of the screen, it's pretty bad, actually. Oh yeah, and there's one thing I'm missing. That is the min-max functionality. My Bryman has got it and it allows you to... It, it will actually keep track of the minimum, maximum and average value that you are measuring. So no matter what setting you are, it will save it and you can recall it with the rec button. This doesn't have it. So if you place this current clamp over a wire and you're going to measure it, you'll need to be um, looking at the screen of this handheld of the, the current clamp. You need to be looking at the screen of the current clamp in order to actually know what the maximum current was. Um, and you're powering on a device or something. So for example, if you're going to check your car battery, uh, you might want to set it to a 100 amps. 
and you want to start your car or something or you want to turn on the radio and you want to see the initial current draw of the radio when it fires on you can't do that you have you need to get another person to do that because you need to be looking at the screen of the current clamp otherwise you'll miss it so that's the only downside that I'm having with this thing there is no option for it to keep track of the minimum maximum and average values well it keeps track of the average value all the time but you know what I mean I would have liked to see that in such a device because most of the times it's just connect and forget and then at the end of the day uh, you want to know how much current it consumed at its peak value or at its min value and now you can't now you have to keep track of that manually so that's the only downside of this thing but it's pretty much I would uh, actually recommend it if you want to have a non-intrusive way of measuring current yeah please go for this one it's really good actually so you can find a link to this device in the description down below if you want to purchase it and I hope to catch you guys in the next video bye oh hey hello uh, I, I wasn't expecting you over here well if you want you can also view two other videos of me so make sure to click them and don't forget to subscribe and like so you always get notified of my new videos